Hi, Shane. My name is Corey. I'm a family nurse practitioner student. I'll be doing your cardiovascular exam today. Um, are you okay if I record it and then put it onto YouTube for my class? Awesome. Okay, so first you would check your blood pressure while they're laying down and then while they're sitting up, checking for orthostatic hypotension, which we don't see any of that today. Next, I'm just going to inspect the patient as a whole, looking for any cardio signs of cardiovascular disruption. So the lips are nice and pink, um, the extremities are warm to the touch. Um, you'd want to do both arms and legs. Looking at the nails, I don't notice any clubbing, any splinter hemorrhages for heart conditions or um, tar staining on the fingers. You can also check for capillary refill at this point on the hands and on the fingers and on the toes. Also looking for clubbing on the toes. Um, and capillary refill is within three seconds. Next, I'm going to just palpate these peripheral pulses. So I'll do the radial, the brachial, and the femoral, which I'll auscultate, and then the popliteal, and then the dorsal pedalis, and the posterior tibial pulses. All of those are three plus. Um, I don't feel any bounding or thrills. And you'd want to do all of those pul um, palpations underneath the clothing. Same with the auscultation, um, but for today's purposes, we're just going to go over the clothes. So I'm listening to the femoral arteries with the diaphragm and also the abdominal aorta, listening for any breweries or any other sounds. The bell is especially, which is what I'm listening to now, it's especially helpful to listen for breweries. Okay, and I'm also going to palpate for the abdominal aorta. You can do this while they're lying flat, it's actually better feeling for any masses or pulsations, which I don't feel any. Okay, Shane, go ahead and recline your chair a little bit. So you'd want the patient to be theoretically about 30 degrees um, for this next part. I'm going to be looking at the veins of your neck. So go ahead and turn your head to the left just a little bit, nice and relaxed. Um, I'm looking for that jugular venous pressure, which I see his pul pulsating just right above his sternal notch. So what you would do is you take a flat object, come out this way, and then a ruler to measure how high up the neck that jugular venous pressure is. And Shane is just about one centimeter, um, below three is normal. And then you would have them turn their head, do the other side as well. You can also note um, the different waves or pulsations in the jugular venous pressure. There's an A wave and a B wave for atrial vent and contraction ventricular filling. Um, and then next thing we're gonna do is just look at, or palpate for the carotid arteries. You'd want to do one at a time. If it's bounding, that can be aortic insufficiency. And if the, um, if it's delayed, which what that means is you can listen to the heart um, and palpate. It should be right between the S1 and S2 sounds. If it's delayed, that would be aortic stenosis. And then also we're going to take our stethoscope and listen to both sides, listening um, for any bruise. That would be atherosclerotic narrowing. The same with the belt and the diaphragm. Awesome. Okay, next thing you would do um, is inspect the chest. Inspect the chest wall for any deformities, pectus excavatum or cardiomatum, any masses or lesions on the chest, anything kind of out of the norm, which we don't see any of that. We're just going to be inspecting over Shane's shirt. Um, next thing we would do is just palpate. So I'm going to just palpate in a few areas, Shane. So I'm going to palpate in the second intercostal space on the right sternal border. That is the um, aortic and then the pulmonic is on the opposite side. And then the mitral and the tricuspid. Herb's point is the fifth intercostal space. We're just going down the intercostal space. And the midclavicular and fifth space is the point of maximal impulse or the, aortic, um, the um, apex of the heart. And what you're feeling for is any heaves or lifts there, which I don't feel any. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to do is auscultate in those exact same or uh, areas. And you should actually do this while they're sitting down and while they're standing up so we can do that. So aortic, pulmonic, mitral. Cuspid, herbs point, 
putting my actual hand pulls. And then also listen with the bell. You know, safe spots. Okay, S1 and S2 sounds are present, no S3 or S4. There's no splitting of the S2, which it actually can be normal and physiologic splitting of the S2 is upon inspiration because um, the lungs are pushing on the heart, making it so that the valves close at separate times. Pathologic would be abnormal and that's when it's present also upon expiratory um, or expiration. Um, so then go ahead and set up for me, Shane. Also, if you're trying to feel for that point of external impulse, you can't quite feel it. You can actually have the patient roll to their left side. And it actually will lean the heart against that chest wall for you to better feel. So we're going to do it sitting up as well. Aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, or mitral, tricuspid, herbs, and maxwell impulse. And then same thing with the bell. Awesome. One other thing you can do is just palpate the chest, palpating the sternum for any tenderness, palpating for any costal chondral tenderness as they have not hurt, and then also feeling for any masses. And that is the cardiovascular system. Thanks, Shane. Yeah.